help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description. Every night before the Prophet ﷺ went to sleep, he recited a dua from the Qur'an. Can anyone tell me what dua that was? It's one that we already completed in the recitation. Before he went to sleep, he always recited this particular dua from the Qur'an. Can anyone tell me? The last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. Okay. رَبَّنَا لَا تُؤَاخِذْنَا إِنْ نَسِينَا أَوْ أَخْطَأْنَا رَبَّنَا وَلَا تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْنَا إِسْرًا كَمَا حَمَلْتَهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِنَا Until the end. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever recites these two, it will suffice them. Meaning if you don't recite some of the other remembrances at night, recite these two verses from the Qur'an before you go to sleep. Now here's a lesser known one. So he went to sleep on a dua from the Qur'an wasallam. When he woke up, he also woke up with a dua from the Qur'an. Does anyone know which dua that was? It was the last... What's he saying? The last verses of Ali Imran, which were recited. Extra credit, what rak'ah? Second rak'ah tonight. So the verses that were recited in the second rak'ah tonight, which are the last verses of Ali Imran, the Prophet ﷺ used to wake up. رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Until the end of it. O oh, our Lord, you did not create all of this in vain. How perfect are you? So protect us from the punishment of the fire. This is such a profound reality just for a moment because we've already covered these du'as. He went to sleep on the end of Al-Baqarah. He woke up on the end of Al-Ali Imran, which shows you the power and the virtue right away of these du'a from the Qur'an, of these supplications from the Qur'an. And this is taken from the hadith of Ibn Abbas عنhuma, who describes in the long narration where he spent the night in the house of the Prophet وسلم, and his aunt Maymuna عنها, was the wife of the Prophet وسلم, and he watched the Prophet وسلم, and he narrates to us his night prayer, his qiyam. And he said that he woke up وسلم, he rose up quickly and he recited the last verses of Ali Imran, this profound supplication from Ali Imran. So he starts with a dua from the Qur'an, he ends with a dua from the Qur'an. Our prayer starts with a dua from the Qur'an. There's something special about the duas from the Qur'an. So let's categorize how we make dua with the Qur'an. First and foremost, there are the duas, the supplications that the Prophet wasallam taught us specifically to make use of. The most frequent dua of the Prophet ﷺ, according to Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu was, Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al -nar. Our Lord grant us the best of this life and the best of the hereafter and protect us from the punishment of the fire. According to Anas radiallahu anhu, that's the dua he heard the Prophet ﷺ make most. The Prophet ﷺ used to make this dua so often. It's a part of our hajj and our umrah. In the last round of Tawaf, the only narrated supplication from the Prophet ﷺ. And he loved comprehensive du'as. The Prophet ﷺ loved these du'as that are so short, yet so comprehensive. Everything is encompassed in this du'a. So you have, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Um Salama radiallahu anha says, that the dua the Prophet ﷺ used to make, that she heard, the dua he used to make most was, does anyone know? Anyone? Ya muqallib al qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. O turner of hearts, make my heart firm on your path. Thumma qara'a, she says, then he would read, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِغْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَهَبَ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَابِ Again, a supplication from Ali Imran. O oh, our Lord, do not let our hearts deviate after you have guided them. Okay? So a Qur'anic comparison or a Qur'anic parallel to that dua of the Prophet So you have again the duas from the Qur'an that the Prophet ﷺ used to be frequent with, those should be your most frequent du'as. And so as you're trying to think of the next du'a to make and the next du'a to make and you're in the middle of your du'a, push yourself 
to frequently recite those du'as that we learned from the Qur'an that the Prophet ﷺ used to frequent most. My beloved brothers and sisters, Ramadan is the month of du'a, Ramadan is the month of recitation of the Qur'an, it is the month of charity, it is the month of all good deeds. And Ramadan is the month when you can please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you can do transaction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every deed that you do in Ramadan, then in outside the month of Ramadan, is multiplied in many folds. So do as much as you can to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month of Ramadan. And my dear brothers and sisters, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the month Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the dua. Allah fulfills the wishes. Allah fulfills the dua. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes his slaves happy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the worshippers happy. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the month when you can turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah for whatever you want and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the things you want, for the things you love and for the problems that you are going through. And every night, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you recite this dua, which are the two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. If you recite these two, it will be enough for the whole night. And if you don't have the ability or if you were kind of busy or if you had some other chores to do so you couldn't recite the Quran much, if you just recite only these two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, then it will be enough for you. So my dear brothers and sisters, memorize these last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. They are very important and they are easy to memorize, learn them, understand them and recite them often. At night, recite these last two verses of the Surah Al-Baqarah and it will suffice you. Don't forget it. This is the dua that Prophet Muhammad SAW used to make every night and in this month of ramadan make it a goal in your life to do dua as much as possible and to make the duas that are mentioned in the quran and learn these two verses of surah al-baqarah the last two verses if you didn't memorize them yet memorize it it will be easier for you to recite every night because when you know something by heart it's kind of easier to recite and there are many other beautiful du'as in the Qur'an. Make time to learn these du'as and repeat them often. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant your wishes. Allah will protect you. Allah will shield you. Allah will increase barakah in your life. Allah will give you risk. Allah will give you sustenance. Allah will open the doors of opportunities for you. Du'a is the mukhul ibadah. Du'a is the essence of worship. And Allah loves when you make du'a. But wasta'inu bi sabri wa salah. Make dua with patience and prayer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Udu'uni astajib alakum. Call me, I'll respond to your call. Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description.